feel the presence of the Lord in here. somebody. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. you do. Same thing. Something God is speaking in this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Kora da 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 ba kasita da da na mashi and da 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 masi and de 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 be shaya. Kora man da da na mohusi and de 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 be kasita da do shada da masi. Aye da na man sora da na boko sita da da na mashi and da da na mahaya. Kora masaya da na mashi and masaya we lie. Ora na na makasi and da da moshe da da na masa put it on the screen. Ora masi and da na mahasi ye. Aya na na masaya. Ora masi ke da na mohusha ya mahaya. Oh, you watching by Facebook tonight? Something in the atmosphere tonight. Slow it down. Something in the atmosphere tonight. Yes, Lord Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We came tonight. Some of us don't know way to go we came tonight some of us don't know what to do we don't know what to do we're searching here and there I said, we're searching here and there, trying to find which way to go, which way to go, which way to go and what to do. Ah, somebody is sick in their body, and the doctor said, they wouldn't get well. That's what they said. Yes, Lord. But whose report will we believe? We will believe the report of the Lord. The report of the Lord. 
but when I was sick and I couldn't get well yes Lord you touch my body and tonight I'm the one that can tell the story when I was sad you came and comforted me wow you came God and restored my joy unto me who am I talking to when I was broke and didn't have a dime you supplied all of my needs you did it just in time that's why I believe you brought me in this place tonight to be a witness to be a witness Lord Jesus to be a witness Oh yes, you rescue me, you rescue me, you rescue me. Somebody get your hands up because his rescuing power is here. 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 Come on, tell him to rescue you. He getting ready to show us how. Thank you, Jesus. When I called you, you came and you rescued me. And now I want to be where you are, Lord. Now I want to be where you are, Lord. When I called you, you came and you rescued me. And now I want to be where you are. Now I want to be where you are. I want to be in your presence. to know what you're doing I don't want to miss nothing that you're doing Jesus Jesus I need you to teach us tonight what it means to have faith in you and trust in you 
I need you to teach us tonight what it means to have faith in you and trust in you. God, you're getting ready to open up some knowledge to us that we haven't, we haven't heard before. You're getting ready to speak some things that, that even me as your servant, I've never heard you reveal before. And Lord, tonight my faith and my trust in you have been increased because of what you have spoken. And so tonight I ask that you would just use me. Just use me as your humble servant tonight. That you would help me to convey to your people how to believe you. That you would help me to convey to your people the importance of knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt that everything that they have asked you for, you have already done it. And it is already complete. And that you are not working on it, but you are finished with it. God, I just felt that in my spirit. That you are not working on it, you are finished with it. And so tonight we praise you for the finished work. Tonight we glorify you for the finished work. Come on, somebody give him a praise for the finished work. For the finished work. Yes, Lord. Oh, you may be seated. Jesus, Jesus. It's compressing when I shout. Thank you, Jesus. I'd like to acknowledge the people of God in this room tonight. I'm telling you, I feel full tonight. With what I know that God is getting ready to speak to us. And you that are watching live by Facebook. I guess we're live, I don't know that we are, but we're watching live by Facebook. Well, I need somebody to write a sign if the television monitor is not working. I have no idea of knowing whether or not we are or not. My God, my God. I believe that we're living in a very critical hour. And the reason why I say that is because there are a lot of parts of our lives that are being challenged by the works of the enemy. However, <clears throat> there is no part that is being challenged like our faith is, like our belief in God. Can you turn that fan around that way? like our faith and our belief in God. And without a belief system, a profound system in place as to how to trust and depend on God, we are nothing but an accident waiting to happen. And I'm not talking about superficial faith, and I'm not talking about, I'm, I've just encountered some things that I have recognized in the body of Christ, and nothing negative to that degree, but to the point that if we don't really get a hold on what God is trying to do, and if we really don't get a hold on who we are in him, and what we are talking about when we talk about these words, though they are so simple, though they are so simple, when we say, Lord, I believe, when we say, God, I trust you, I'm finding out that it's hard to trust God. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm just going to speak, I'm going to speak, uh, I'm going to speak reality for some people, and I'm going to speak reality on behalf of Sometimes when even I encounter some things, I find it hard, hard to believe God. Hard. And so many times people make it sound like it's so easy and they say, just trust God, just believe God. God gonna do it. And you feel that, that level of encouragement as long as they are with you and they're around you and they're speaking that to you. But when you get by yourself, something happens to our faith. Our faith is challenged on a whole nother level. 
and we start hearing what I call the warfare. God just let me teach this tonight. The warfare. And the warfare is, the Bible says that God dwells with prudence. And prudence is, I, I looked it up, and prudence is the care and the attention for your future. The care and the attention that a person gives for their future. And so what happens is, when we start believing God for something that is in our future, something that God is going to do, the minute we get by ourselves, the enemy's job is to take our mind back into our past. Because the enemy is afraid of our future. And he knows as long as your mind is in your past and your mind is on you and your mind is on the things that you have been through, you do not get an opportunity to operate in the spirit of prudence and therefore you lose your faith. Your faith is, watch this, your faith is, and I know some people say, well, well my faith is, is, is in, yes, what God is going to do and, 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 and all of the above. But the word of God is already finished. The word of God is already complete. And because the word of God is already complete, watch this, because his word is already complete, then the enemy do not want us to stand in the now of God because the now of his word is what ushers us into our future. We're able to believe God to move forward because we believe him now. I cannot move forward because I do not believe now. Now is what takes me there. When I walked up to this podium, if I'm standing here, here takes me here. Are you hearing me? But the enemy wants us to go backwards because when you step backwards, you step out of the now. And you step back in the realm that God is finished with. No, I'm going to teach tonight. I'm going to teach tonight. So I said, God, well then, what is it that we're struggling with? What is it that we're struggling with? So let's go to the scripture. Hebrews 10, 16, and 17. Unique, I need you to look at me. Hebrews 10, 16, and 17. Hebrews 10, 16, and 17. It says, yeah, that's where I want to go. He says, um, no, I'm going to go here. Let me go to the book of Hebrews uh, 10 and 37. That's what I want. That's what I want. For still a little while, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. For still a little while, a very little while, and the coming one will come, and he will not delay. But the just shall live by faith. My righteous servant shall live by his conviction. Respecting man's relationship to God and divine things. And holy fervor, born of faith, and conjoined with, and if, watch this, and if he draws back, and shrinks in fear, my soul has no delight or pleasure in him. Are you hearing this? So he's saying here, this word conjoined is what got me. And I began to read up on that. The word conjoined, conjoined is what got me. We have to look at this word conjoined because faith is not an isolated act. It is not something that can be done um, from an isolated perspective. It says here, there's keys in this scripture that helps us to understand that first of all, the person has to be an individual that know how to respect the divine. That know how to, watch this, I didn't say know how to operate in it, but know how to respect the divine. Because if the expectation of the person is not from the divine, then you are trying to, to have a spiritual experience with a natural approach. If you just use in your mind to believe God, 
then you're trying to ask God to do something supernatural with a natural approach. And what do I mean by natural approach? I'm going to help you with that. Because the Bible helps us to know the two things. Who is God? A lot of times we have to ask ourselves that. We say, well, you know, God, God is omnipotent. God is all-powerful. God is almighty. God is this and God is that. And I started reading that. It said, no, no. And every time it comes back to it, you got to ask yourself. And this is where we are. As human beings, we live in time. And I got to explain this. We live in time. Pastor Roya, we live in time. And so God is love. But when we are born into the world, it, watch this. When we are born into the world as an individual, as a child, as a baby, love is not the first thing we are taught. The first thing we are taught is knowledge. And knowledge, watch this, and knowledge brings about a natural operation in faith, but it is a natural faith. Knowledge says, sit down in that chair. And your mother tells you to sit in the chair. You don't know what a chair is. You're only one years old. You're only two years old. You don't know what a chair is. But as you continue to follow the knowledge that she has given you, she don't have to be right. I, I'm going to say that. Your mama don't have to be right. But if you keep on hearing her say sit in the chair, you identify the word chair with that right there. And so it causes you to believe and you don't need God. You don't need a spiritual experience to be taught natural faith. And so what we're trying to do now, we're trying to operate in something that is supernatural with natural faith. Why am I saying natural faith? Because I am going by what you say. I don't believe God by myself because I don't have a spiritual experience with him. I believe what you say. And the minute you stop saying it, I can't believe it no more. Because me and you may stop speaking two weeks from now. I'm not hearing y'all. I said me and you would stop speaking two weeks from now. And now I don't have no more faith because you were my faith. Because you were my belief system. Because I held on because of you. I I I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. And a lot of our faith in this hour is connected to people. And it's connected to buildings. And it's connected to an atmosphere. And it's connected to an experience. I'm not hearing you say nothing here. And it's connected to everything. But what is the real combination of faith? God, I wish I had somebody in here to help me. I wish I had somebody here to help me. You think about it. You think about it. Some of y'all said, well, you know what? When I heard that tape, I just felt like running on to be with the Lord. When I heard Bishop Jakes preach that, that thing really, really got me. When I heard Dr. Bynum preach that, my God, my soul was blessed. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to help us real good. I'm going to help us real good. Until you hear something negative about Juanita Bynum, there go your faith. Until you hear something negative about Bishop Jakes, there go your faith. Oh, y'all, I'm not. Uh, well, see, you know what? I knew it wasn't nobody right. I'm just going to go on and just lead the church because I knew. Because your faith was never in God. God, who am I preaching to up in here? Your faith is in a form, in identity, something that you like. Oh, y'all sit down. Y'all sit down. I got to do this. I got to do this. Somebody need to tell the devil, give me back my faith. Lord Jesus, I said somebody in here need to tell the devil, give me back my faith. No, no, tell him like you mean it. Say it one more time. Okay, so wait a minute. My faith. But, 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 but Dr. Biden, I feel the spirit. You know, the spirit of the Lord moved on me and I felt like I could just believe God. Like, 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 like man, my faith just, stay back there. My faith, my faith was just increased because something happened when I was in the service and, and I just felt the spirit of fear just lift off of me. And I just felt like, I just felt like I could just run on because, because wow, whew, 
I feel so much better. Well, the reason why you feel better is because the spirit of God is a dominated spirit over everything that was birthed out of the will of God. The human race was birthed out because this is what the Lord willed it to be so. And I'll tell you why he willed it to be so in a few minutes. But, 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 but anything that is moving and breathing, anything that's moving and breathing, the breath, the breath is a spirit. The breath of the spirit. So the breath ha, comes from the spirit of God. He loans you that ha. So anytime he feel like going inside of you and intermingling with the ha, he can. He can. So then, so then you don't even have to be living right to feel the ha. You know, I just felt God. I just felt God. But see, this is what happens. This is what happens. The spirit of God is not legal and it cannot grab a hold to anything because watch this. Because watch this. There is nothing in you that remains. Okay, the Bible said the name of the Lord, which is Jesus Christ, is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and there they are safe. Safe means saved. In other words, we get saved from Jesus Christ. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We get life from Jesus Christ. So when you have a plan that you are praying about and you want God to give it life, if you don't have Christ, you get the, huh, but the spirit can't stay and save your vision because you do not have the save of your that's why the devil plays with your salvation because without the save of your you can always experience the spirit but the spirit cannot save your business It's illegal for the spirit to save anything outside of the Savior. Okay. Yes, Lord. So then, what is my faith? Well, I go to church and I'm a Christian. How do you know you're a Christian? Well, because that's my faith. That's my faith. I'm a Christian. Okay. You're a Christian because now you become the church. Now, how do I become the church? Uh, Y'all, I didn't, I didn't come with no cereal. This is, this is the meat. I didn't come with no cereal. How am I a Christian? I'm a Christian because... I am a form and an establishment of the church. How do I know that? How do I know that I am a form and an establishment of a church? Because the church consists of two entities. The church consists of God is love, God is love, and Jesus Christ, the word. And so he is the author and the finisher of our faith according to the book of Hebrews, which means he's the initiative of what I believe. I cannot believe anything without Jesus. So the church is consistent of the love of God and the word of Jesus. And those two things become one inside of you, which makes you the church, which makes you the legal. Okay, if you got the love of God and you just loving God, but you're not saved, you're not legal. And God can't use that in the church. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to come over here and say that because maybe somebody didn't hear what I said. Because right now, there was a demonic spirit that's going around the world that they want everybody to focus on. He loves us. He loves us. And God is loving. He loves me. And 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 he loves me. But if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, he's going to be still loving you while you're going to hell. The day you take your last breath, he ain't going to never hate you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Who am I talking about? Because God is love. God is love. He gave salvation and he gave the word to Jesus Christ. That's why he said, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Who am I talking to? So how can you pray about something and believe God for something and bypass being saved? to right now who is he talking to right now how can you do that that's impossible because faith is truth faith 
is truth. Jesus is faith. Well, I believe in Jesus. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. You believe in the man with the beard and the long hair. You believe in images and angels and I'm not hearing y'all. You believe I had a vision, I had a dream. I'm not hearing y'all. You believe I felt something touch me on my shoulder. Y'all ain't talking back in here. Jesus is faith. Jesus is faith. God is love. Jesus is faith. Jesus is faith. Jesus is not a feeling. That's why he said in this word, I'm going to ascribe the law in your mind and in your heart. I'm going to write it. He said nothing about feeling it. I'm going to write it because Jesus is faith, which means if I don't read my Bible, I don't have faith. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to believe God, Dr. Bynum. Listen, the feeling of an external experience without the confirmation of a word is an emulation of faith. It causes you to feel like you got it. I'm gonna come over here, cause maybe y'all don't, y'all don't want no spiritual encounter today. It's, it's a, Rhonda, you hear that? You got that? It's an emulation. If there is nothing in you that's sitting in you, like when the word is in you, and like now some of y'all in here, you feel in the spirit, you feel in the spirit. Some people is just gonna get a huh, but 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 some of you all that's got the word sitting down in there. The word is ready for the spirit to activate it. And so the reason why your hands is up, because the spirit is moving and the word is saying, got that, got that, got that, got that, got that. Watch this, watch this. And when the word says I got it, the Bible said, anybody that he is sitting in my hand, the devil can't pluck it out. Who am I talking about? Y'all ain't saying that. Let me go on this side right here. The word lets us know that when he puts his mouth on it, when he speaks it, he said, I'm not a man that I should lie. Neither the son of man that I should repent. If I spoke it, oh, whew, got it. I'm going to bring it to pass. Tell somebody the word got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You may be talking to a huh, person. Tell somebody the word got it. Tell somebody he gave me a word on this thing. I'm not, I'm not just shouting. I'm not just hollering. I'm not just jumping. I got a word on what he said. See, this is the reason why. Lord have mercy. This is the reason why when things come that now, now, now this is powerful pastor. This is going to bless you. The first thing the firstborn of time is knowledge. Like in firstborn. What's born the first time? In time. What's first in time watch this is faith. What, what you learned first as a child is faith. But what's first in the end, he's Alpha and Omega. What's first in the eternal place is love. So we have faith birthed into the earth realm as our first incentive because love was the first in eternal. So I'm not. Okay. okay, let me explain to you this one. Let me explain to you this one. I'm, I'm going to lay this out for you, and you're going to see what I mean. So if you're going to build a temple, the first thing you do is lay the foundation. You build up the walls. You, 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 uh, you build the altar. You build all of that up. You, you put all the artifacts. 
inside of the temple. And then you're doing all this because you want the people to worship. So building of the temple is the first thing in time. But the worship is the consequence of what you're looking for. I built this because I want to see this. Okay, let's think about a house. The first thing you do in time, in a house, in time, time, earth time, is you build the walls, you put the doors and the front porch on there, and then you fill it for the furniture. Why? Because I want people to dwell in there and live in there. I built this for this. So the, so the structure of what I built was because I did the external because I want something internal to be involved in this. I, Lord, am I, am I helping anybody? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. So, 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 so then when you, when, you, when, you, uh, when you build a garden, you smooth the land, you dig it up, you plant the seed, you cultivate it, and then you get flowers, and then you get fruit. Well, I did all this digging, and I did all this planting because I wanted this. Come on, somebody. Uh huh. So, same thing, same thing. Here it is. The word came into the earth realm as the firstborn from heaven. And the reason why he came is because God so loved. But he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for the benefit of what? For these people over here. Because what did I want from them? I want worship. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Who am I talking to? So what am I trying to say to you? If you got faith and there is nothing about what you believe in God for that contains the love of God, it cannot come to pass. Look, I, I can't. So, I want God to do this for me. Let me help you. I want God to do this for me. But I don't have no love interest in the end of it. So not what you're trying to do. You're trying to operate with Jesus without the love of God. So, 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 so now you're trying to cancel out how Jesus got here. I, I got here because he for so loved. He, did, he didn't send me because he was interested in me. He sent me because he loved. Love brought me here. Love took me to the cross. Now you want to believe in me, but you want to don't listen. You don't want to do it for the benefit of love. Uh -huh. The reason why I want a women's shelter is because I love women of God. The reason why, come on somebody up in here. The reason why you want God to give you a restaurant is because you love to minister to people. The reason why you want God to give you a house because you love helping and cooking for people. The reason why you want God to give you a car because I love the saints and I don't want them to walk. Who am I talking to? We asking God for too much stuff that love of the church and God is not our motivation. No, I want this because they said I couldn't have it. And watch what's going to happen when I get it. That's why you ain't got it. Wait till I drive up in this. They mouths going to drop. That's why you ain't got it. Because watch this. Because you're doing it with knowledge. You're doing it with knowledge, which is emulated faith. Okay, 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 somebody ain't, somebody ain't, uh, somebody, somebody hearing this? Wait, 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 wait. Look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it, look at it. Every time you look at the Bible, Dr. Johnson, and you see a miracle, 
There's going to be three things you're going to find as an ingredient as to how that miracle took place. Three things. You're going to find love. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You're going to find faith, which is truth. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And you're going to find understanding. Uh -huh. God going to give miracles to stupid people. Uh -huh. I'm going to say that one more time. There's three entities that you're going to find. In order for you to get something from God, in order for God to do what he said he's going to do, you're going to need to be able to identify three entities of what you're believing. You're going to need truth, you're going to need love, and you're going to need understanding. If you are missing any of those, he's not going to give it to you out of love and truth because you don't even understand what you got. What, what? Why is everybody quiet? Why is everybody quiet? Why is everybody quiet? I'm believing God. No, you're not. You're emulating faith. I believe God. No, you don't. No, you don't. You're emulating faith. You're trying to look like you got faith. Well, no, Dr. Bottom, I do have faith. I promise you I got faith. No, I promise you, you don't. <laughs> what I'm going to believe, I'm going to believe God. Dr. Bottom, let me tell you, I ain't, my faith ain't never wavered. I ain't never shook on what God said. I mean, I just been believing him all the way. And I promise you, I believe God. You don't believe God. You don't believe God. You don't believe God. You're emulating faith. How do I know that? Because when I believe God, when God don't do it, I still believe God. I, I just said something, I'm going to just walk on out this building now. Uh -huh. That's how I know I believe God. I believe God because when God don't do it, I still believe God. Why? Because love is a part of my combination. And if God didn't do it, there was something about it that was going to hurt me. And therefore, the Lord loved me enough to tell me no. I I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all ain't saying nothing up in here. That's when God says no. Do you still believe God? Oh my God. Is it still faith when God said no? Are you still shouting? when God said no when he says no love is in that answer why y'all ain't saying nothing why y'all ain't saying nothing? Okay, let me give you an example. Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. And the Lord said, no. John the Baptist, should I believe you, Jesus, or is there another? Is you gonna come and get me because they gonna cut my head off? And Jesus said, believe whatever you wanna believe. But today your head is coming off. God told him no. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I can't get nobody to talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody to talk to me. Wait, 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 where's everybody? Stephen, come on out here. Come on out here because we're going to persecute you. All right, Lord, I believe you. I trust you. I know you're going to get me out of this. Stephen, come on out here. The whole town hates you and we can't stand you. God, I know you're with me. You're going to send some angels. And God said, no, no. And you're going to get stoned to death. And you're going to look up and see me standing up. And I'm going to give you a standing ovation because you respected my love. Because you really did understand faith. You understood faith well enough not to deny me when rocks was knocking your teeth out. And hitting you in your head and busting you in your eye. You kept your focus on what faith really is and faith is this is the truth of what God wants me to do he wants me to be a martyr for the kingdom of God this is love that God is operating in my life because he loves the world and he's going to use my persecution to help the saints in 2019 know how to stand I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. We able to take it because 
Jesus took it. Because God so loved the world. That it's a gift that keep on giving. His, his no is my faith. I believed him to the answer. Real faith is I believe him until the answer. And then my belief, Lisa, turns into trust after I don't get the answer I want. And then my trust, my trust then, what does my trust do? Okay, okay, let me do this. Let me do this, let me do it like this. So, 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 my love of God, my understanding of God, and the truth puts me in the faith line. So I believe God unto my answer. If my answer is no, then my belief turns into trust. Watch this. So what does my trust do? My trust sends me back to start all over again to believe God. I can't get nobody to talk to me. Did y'all see that? I believe God until he give me the answer. And whatever his answer is, is yea and amen. And what he does is after that, after he saw me trust him to the end of the answer, and even though I didn't get the answer that I wanted, I was still able to say, Lord, I trust you. He said, come on over here. I'm going to cause you to believe me for something else. Y'all come, come over here, somebody. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And how do you know that your faith has not failed? How do you know that you still believe God? How do you know that God is still operating in your life and you still haven't lost your faith in God? Because every time you pray for somebody else, God do it. Every time you prophesy over somebody else, God do it. So ain't that wrong with your faith you just gotta oh yo you just gotta trust the process you just gotta trust the journey who am i preaching to tonight tell your neighbor ain't nothing wrong with my faith because it worked when i prayed for you ain't nothing wrong with your faith it worked when you prayed for your mama when you prayed for your children when you prayed for your pastor you just gotta trust the process okay okay god i know what i'm talking about i know what i'm talking about Okay, God, was that your answer? Was that your answer? Okay. Then if that's your answer, then I thank you for not stopping your love for me. You didn't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I feel this thing so heavy tonight. No, I thank you because I thank you because you proved to me that you still love me. You still love me because you a good father. You a real good father. Because no father always say yes. I know you're my real daddy now because you tell me no sometimes. Oh, y'all, come on here. I know you know what's best for me. I know you ain't trying to spoil me. You trying to raise me. You trying to birth me out. And the only way you can do that, not only do you have to correct me, but you have to tell me no to some good things. You got to tell me no to some stuff that I was believing you for. Who am I talking to? Because you got to learn. Yes, Lord, that you don't get everything you want. No child does. No child does. I'm a child of God. No child does. I remember when I was little, I kept asking my daddy for a bike. I want a bike. I want a bike. I want a bike. No, you didn't get nobody. Daddy, I want a bike. I want a bike. No. You ain't getting nobody. Everybody on the block got a bike. 
He said, everybody on the block don't have no bike because you don't have one. <laughs> Wait a minute. And I was his favorite. <laughs> I was his favorite. Like we are the apple of God's eye. And he kept saying, no, you can't get nobody. I was like, okay. He ain't gonna let me have nobody. So then, I cut the grass. I did extra stuff. I started cleaning up the, cleaning up the backyard and raking leaves. I started trimming edges and all of that. Making sure everything was nice, washing off the porch and everything. He come home and said, this is really nice. And I said, Daddy, I, I, I want a bike. He said, that's what you're supposed to do. You don't get no bike because you cut your own grass where you live. You don't get no bike because you wash off the porch that you got to walk up on every day. No, 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 no. You ain't getting no bike. I said, that's, some, that's, that, that's that, everybody got bikes. Everybody on the block had a bike. And they were just riding each other's bike. And you take my bike and I take your bike and we trade. And, and all of us, we going to ride and we going to ride and we going to ride and we going to ride. And then finally, finally you look around, everybody bike tow up. Everybody ain't got no front tire, seat broke, steering wheel is stripped. And here come my daddy in the station wagon with a brand new 10-speed gold swing bike. And here I am riding my bike. Tell me, you can't ride my bike because it took me too long to get this bike. You ain't going to tear up my bike. Oh, oh, y'all, come on. And see, sometimes when the Lord said no, it's not a no. It's not a denial. Come on, somebody. He got to wait until it's to your advantage. So when people see it, everybody know how you got it. And when you get it, you turn around and you say, I can't mess over this blessing because it took me too long to get this. I cried a many a night. I fasted a many a days. I went through the fire. I went through the storm. I can't just handle this any kind of way. entities working in you. Watch this. I'm getting to the third one. A yes is your faith. A no is his love. And both have to operate in you before you get a miracle. You, you have to know what a no means. Lord, okay, this, I just heard him say something, I almost went out. You have to know what a no means so you will know how to sanctify the yes. When you, so you will know how to, how to keep the yes from being contaminated. So you would know how to protect what he gave you and how to put a covering around it. How to sanctify it and say, I can't use this for any and everything. I can't be around any and everybody because I'm walking with a yes in me. Because I can remember when I did listen. I can remember when I couldn't get in touch with God. I can remember when it looked like he wasn't even listening to me. I can remember when it looked like he turned his back on me and he wasn't even going to hear my cry. I can remember the sleepless nights. I can remember not being able to hold food down on my stomach. I can remember when everybody was saying everything about me I remember when I would put the pillow over my head and still couldn't stop hearing my mind cuss me out I'm not hearing you who am I talking to and after God finally said yes to peace and yes to love and yes to prosperity I got to now sanctify it I can't use none of it for the devil I can't have nobody around me that's got the devil in them I'm not hearing you who is God preaching to God I feel the Holy Ghost up in here somebody give God a shout I'm gonna mess up, y'all sit down. I'm gonna mess up. Hey! Sometimes they won't understand you. Uh -huh. They're gonna think you stuck up. They're gonna call you arrogant. I'm not stuck up. I'm sanctifying my ass. Y'all, 
y'all making me go too fast. Y'all sit down. See, you don't know how to praise God right there. If you ain't had a life full of no's, you don't know how to handle the person when they get a yes. Oh! You don't know how to handle the praise of a person when God said yes. Who am I talking to? That's why every time I hear him call my name, I say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Sit down, let me just do this. I gotta get this last point out. Hmm. Tell somebody in here, say, excuse me for a minute. I just gotta give them a praise. Wait a minute, I gotta give them a praise on an old no and a future yes. <laughs> that part right there. The reason why some of us is praising God because the devil tried to sideswipe us. He tried to catch us off guard, but God stepped in and delivered anyhow because the Bible said that when the righteous cry, the Lord will hear him and deliver him out of all of his troubles. All you gotta do is say yes. Tell him yes. Tell him yes. to do this right quick okay okay so hold on hold on Josh so I got to give you this third one and you can't embrace the third one unless you embrace Job 22 and 21, when it says, uh, now, now here it is, here it is, this for you, this for you. But you know, at the bottom, I just can't handle it. I, I can't, I can't deal with it. I, I don't think I can take it. I don't think I can take no more. I don't, take, I, I don't think I can take no more of this foolishness. Okay, here it is. All things work. You know what I need you to do tonight? I need you to, I need you to get your enemy in your mind and say, come on, work with me. Work with me. Work with me. Now, then, now come on. I, w- I want you to get that thing that's trying to come against you and say, work with me. Work with me. Come on, come on. Because this ain't no real miracle unless you work with me. Because all things work together for the good to them that love God. That's the good, the bad, and indifference. So I need you. No, no, no. Don't back up now. Uh-uh. Don't act like you're scared now. No, no, no. Don't be acting like you might as well leave me alone. No, come work with me. Because if you're not with me, then I can't get no table. Because she said, I will prepare a table before you in my presence. Of your enemy. Somebody better shout right there. You gotta walk with me. Don't back up now. Hey! Don't back up now. Don't stop lying now. Don't stop gossiping now. I need you to walk with me. Listen. Josh, hold on. Y- y- y'all sit down. Yeah. 
Y'all taking me too fast. It says, Job 22 and 21. Agree with God quickly. Well, Dr. Burnham, this is the devil. Yeah. By way of God. This is the devil. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know that. I know that. Okay. So, so, um, so why you go over there and just, just keep squeezing that lady like that right there, right there. And, and just, and every time he, she do that, you kind of just like leave me alone. Leave me. <laughs> and so. And so, and so, and so, the, the Lord permits the enemy to just keep grabbing you. And you see what she doing? You see what she doing? She's saying, leave me, leave me alone, leave me. See how she breaking down? But see, it don't work until you turn around and say, hold on, hey, 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 hey. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Because, because what God is trying to do is teach you how to rebuke the enemy. And you don't know how to rebuke him if you ain't never confronted him. I can't, Lord, Lord I just said something. I just said something. He ain't finna overtake you, honey, he your practice. Who am I talking about? He's not getting ready to overtake you. He's not getting ready to overcome you. Because the Bible says you overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of your testimony. Back up, devil. Come on, somebody. And that's when God said, there it is, there it is. That's what I was waiting for. I was waiting to see if faith, understanding, and truth, and love is operating in you. When you understand who you are. Then the way I perceive warfare is different. Okay, here it is. Sit down. So, I got, I got to go. It's my time. Agree with God and, and show yourself to be conformed to his will. Watch, 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 watch. So, so, what is understanding? Three entities of how to move in God, how to believe God, how to have faith in God. So, the Bible says in Hebrews, you'll keep hearing it say, by faith, this was done. And, and by faith, that was done. Well, the word by, the word by, I took the pleasure of looking up the word by. The word by says, Dr. Johnson, that it is the announcement to the entity that is doing the work. So, by means this gonna be done with this faith right here. Cause this gonna be done by faith. So I'm gonna identify who gonna do it, okay? But faith is being converted into truth and truth was sent from heaven by love. And so, and so it's easy for me to understand that God is love and it's easy for me to understand that, 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 that Jesus is truth. The hard part, the hard part is the understanding. The understanding of the entity of it. Because, watch this, watch this, watch this. I'm gonna bless y'all so good right here. Because I told you, it'll change you. It'll change you. This thing will change you. So understanding, understanding is an individual's perception or judgment of a situation. Watch this. An, in, an internal or unspoken agreement or arrangement. Uh -huh. When I understand, when I understand what God is trying to do in my life, then I don't, I don't have to be able to voice it, but I do need to have an internal agreement with it. Y'all making me, y'all, because cause, cause, cause sometimes if I try to explain what he doing, people look at you like you crazy. 
you know, you tell somebody, I lost my job and bless God, it really let you off. No, 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 I just have to internally agree with what God is doing. But how do I do that? How do I do that? How do I do that? How, do, how, how is there an indication that I understand, that I, that I am in agreement? Uh -huh. Because when you understand, watch this, everything that I searched out about understanding, understanding in everything that I've researched, it keeps turning into something that is, that is classified as an action, as an action, not a thought pattern, but understanding is not something that I think is something that I do after I have thought it. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 God, I hear you. I hear you. So when I know that I understand something, come on, somebody, I do things differently. I do it because I understand it. The fact that you don't do it says that you heard it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And you comprehended it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. But you did not understand it. Because the minute you understand it, you start doing it. I'm not giving y'all. The whole world can be crumbling around you, but you start walking around like the joy of the Lord is my strength. It look like everything is failing, but you start quoting the scripture that says I can do all things. Through Christ which strengthened me. Who am I talking to? You start looking the devil in his face and say, no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. Why? Because internally I understand it. Now, having done all to stand, I'm able to stand because I understand who are you talking to on Facebook? Wait, 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 wait. Listen to this, y'all. I'm going to show you something right here. Listen to this. Listen to this. When, watch this, this thing is good. God, this is good. So, why do you want me to fight for you? Why do you want me to step in and fight for you? And you don't understand because now you asking me to fight a battle where there is no war. See, I'm not, I just wish I had somebody. Sister Vanessa, did you understand what I just said? Now you asking God to fight a battle where there is no war. Uh, cause, cause, Cause the war has to be your resistance of a lion spirit. When you sitting at home crying, you agreeing with that spirit. So if you ask me to war against a lion spirit, you're asking me to war against you and the lion spirit. Because now you have agreed with that thing. Uh -oh -oh. See, I'm not getting nobody to talk to me. That's why you gotta fight your mind. That's why you got to tell your mind, no, 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 devil, you're a lie, you're a lie, you're a lie, you're a lie. Because guess why? A lion spirit is the enemy against God. And if I agree with it, I become his enemy too. And that's the reason why your life keeps vacillating in and out and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. Because you won't stand firm to the agreement, the internal agreement. I'm not hearing y'all. Sometimes you're going to have to be crying with tears coming down your face. But you're going to still be saying, Lord, I trust you. That's just my feelings. Don't the Lord ignore my feelings. But my faith is still in you. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all better come over here y'all better come on here that's why the bible said that when god ascribed the law in your mind and in your heart when he put the law in there the law didn't come in as a feeling it came in as a fact and so you're not supposed to govern your faith by your feelings you're supposed to govern your faith by the facts of the word who am i talking to somebody better open up your mouth and say something in here with him because I with Dr. Bynum well what am I going to do about my feelings <coughs> 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 
what I'm going to do about my feelings. How can I, how can I handle my feelings? So, so the offense to the in you, the breath of the Holy Spirit in you, the offense is, watch this, how is this going to bless you? The offense is, the, the breath of the Spirit is a, a lasting feeling. Everybody breathe in and breathe out. Do that again. Okay, unless he calls you home, that is going to be consistent. Your hurt is not. So now you're planting your whole life in something that's going to change because scientists says every 30 seconds your feelings change. Come on now. Come on now. See? So the devil got you running all over the world, in and out of all kinds of feelings. How you feel today? Oh, I feel great. Call him two hours later. How you feel today? Oh, the devil just really busy. Then you get a good news that you got your car approved. How you feel today? Girl, I got my car. Girl, you sound like you on tick. Girl, yes, I am. You come out the parking lot and somebody hit it. How you doing? Girl, somebody just hit my car. I'm I, 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 I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you to do what I do. Feelings come outside. Not today. I, I really don't have time. And, 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 and watch this. And I know it looked funny, but sometimes sometime you got to feel it. You got to feel it like this. You know, it hurts you and you got to go, mm. okay, I felt that. Now I got to keep on going over here because I, 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 I got I to gotta finish my dissertation. I got to let's, let, I gotta preach tomorrow night. I ain't got time to stay in the feeling. So, mm. yeah, I feel like that hurt. Okay. Mm. One tissue. You get one tissue. I got to go. I got to go. I can't, I, listen, I can't be held up in this emotion because there's another one coming. And now I'm getting ready to have a pile of tissues. So I cannot stay in you because I got to prepare myself for the next. Because uh, I know it's coming. Depression comes when you let the feelings pile up. I'm not hearing y'all. And after a while, you're overtaken by feelings and not the power of the breath of the Holy Ghost. Who am I talking to? And so I, so I, I am learning to trust him with three entities. Is this how do I know to hold on to it? How do you know when to hold on to what he said? Is this the truth? Is this because I love what I'm going to do with it for the kingdom? And number three, do I understand it? How do I know that? Now, this going this to hurt you. Some of y'all is going to bless you. How do I know I understand it? Because I'm doing it before I get enough money to do it. I'm baking cookies even though I ain't got my bakery yet. Y'all ain't, I'm selling them out of my kitchen. You ain't, see y'all don't hear me. I'm doing hair in my basement. Y'all ain't talking to me. I done cleared out one of my cabinets and I ain't got no groceries in it. I got stacks of hair up there where I sell hair. I ain't got my own store yet. Who is God talking to? Somebody better open up your mouth and say something. I got people in my house and I'm teaching them. I'm teaching them Bible study because I want to open up my institution, my theological seminary. I'm doing it without money. I'm doing it without connections. I'm doing it without friends. I'm doing it even though I feel shaky. I shall I shall I 
know it's going to come to pass because I got truth, I got love, and I got understanding. When I understand it, I do it. I can't get nobody to talk to me. I remember when I wanted to go on TV. I close with this. I remember when I wanted to go on TV. And I set up the cameras. And they got me some, some old used cameras. And I, I set up the cameras in my house. And I was taping those shows. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And then before that, I told God I wanted to be back on TV. And so he said to me one day, do you believe you're supposed to be on the camera? I said, yes, Lord, I believe. Do you believe I called you to do this? I said, yes, Lord. He said, then sit down here on Facebook. Sit down here on Facebook and do it for nothing. Don't ask nobody for no money. Don't ask them nothing. You just sit there and you just teach. If that's what you feel like you've been called to do. You teach it with an iPhone. I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. You ain't got no master camera. You ain't got no producer. I was my own, come on somebody. I turned my own phone on. I checked my own lighting. Come on somebody. And I had to work it. I had to work it for two years. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Until God made the way. You, you, you don't hear me. You don't hear me. You don't hear me. Until God made the way. And then the Lord opened up the door. Come on, somebody. And when the Lord opened up the door and I proved myself to know that it was the truth. And I understood it because I became faithful. Then it took me into another dimension. Because when you understand it and you do it and you keep on doing it and you keep on doing it. Now you've been classified at a whole other level. Now your name is faithful. And the Bible said a faithful man shall abound with blessings. And that's how you get the blessing. You get the blessing because you keep on doing it. When you ain't got enough money, you keep on doing it. When you ain't got no friends, you keep on doing it. When ain't nobody patting you on your back, you keep on doing it. When you ain't getting no prophecies from nobody, you keep on doing it. What's she doing on Facebook? That is what I need to find them doing, sitting on Facebook. What's she doing on that floor? Why she sitting there like that? She can't afford TV. She ain't got no money. She broke. Faith writes a check for you. Because when it was time to go on TV, I ain't spent one dime to be on there five days a week. I said, faith will write a check for you. When it was time to do this studio like CNN, I didn't have to spend one dime. Faith will write a check. You don't hear me. Somebody better open up your mouth. And I'm here to tell you, in a couple of months, your mouth going to hit the ground. Because faith done did it again. Who am I talking to? You better start shouting in here. Because faith got some checks with your name on it. Somebody give God a praise. Listen, I close with this. saying nothing. Let me tell you what real faith does. Here it is. Proverbs 1 and 5. Said the wise also will hear and increase in learning. And the person, not my prayer group, not my intercessory partner, not me and my friends, but the person of understanding the person of understanding will acquire skill meaning watch this 
when you get understanding, God will start allowing you to perfect yourself in it until you're skilled at what you do. And once you become skilled, it said, and they will become skilled and attain to sound counsel so that he may be able to steer his own course rightly. I don't need nobody to put a bit in my nose. When I walk with real understanding, I know where I'm going. I can steer my own course. heard one scripture say, hey, some Josh, I'm done. I heard one scripture say, and this is the kind of faith that was not revealed to the senses. Which says, I'm finna bless y'all, which says there's some days I'm supposed to be crying over here and praising on this side. Because what's happened on this side ain't been revealed to this side. And it just know to do only one thing and that's cry. So I, I feel sorry for this side. Cause this side ain't revealed to this side that I got the victory. So my crying don't mean I'm defeated. It means my senses is going through something. So let me just pray for my senses. Let me come on, come on, senses, get better. Come on now, pick yourself up. Come on, cause, cause my faith side over here, it ain't, it ain't revealed to my senses over here that I do have the victory. So sometimes that's why you gotta just pick, pick that side up and say, come on, let me put you in a sling. Let me, let me help you out today. You feeling a little weak? You know, it, it, you got it right. You got it right, cause, cause, cause this revelation ha have not been revealed to you. And the Bible said that you can't even comprehend it. So, you know, I'm, I'm crying, but it's a separated emotion. Did that just bless somebody like it just blessed me? Did that just, somebody say, you all right, Pastor Roy? You, oh, just Pastor Roy, you crying? Separated emotion, honey, I'm all right. I know God gonna do a separated emotion, that's all. That's all, that's all, that's all. Because the body got to do what the body do. When the limbic system and the frontal is attacked and is hit and the limbic system goes into action and the chemicals in my body go off balance because I just got some bad news, it's a natural reaction for the body to start crying, but that ain't what my spirit is. The Bible said that every time Hezekiah was attacked, and he was attacked repeatedly, it said every time, listen to this, every time he went into the house of God and he cried out to the Lord. Every time he got attacked, And he kept taking his whole self with him. So y'all be in the time, don't, don't you cry, don't you, mm -mm, take your whole self with you. Cause your tears gotta be in the presence of your victory. Take your whole self with you. Start praying to God, don't be talking about God, I just, I don't wanna cry, but I'm just, mm-mm. The Bible said he cried out to the Lord every time he was attacked. And then the Bible said, now this is going to bless your whole life. It's going to bless your whole life. The whole entire Assyrian army was after him. Every time they attacked him, he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord sent one angel. He sent one angel and slew over 140,000 soldiers because he kept going to God and he kept taking his tears with him. 
and you're so powerful in this building, you don't need a heavenly host. All you need is one angel. Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't get nobody over here, so I'm gonna come on this side. I'm gonna come on this side. One angel. One angel. He sent one angel. And he said to Hezekiah, you, 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 you stay in here crying. Because watch this, Pastor Soroya. Even though he was crying out to God, where he postured himself, said, I haven't lost my faith. Because he went back in the temple and went in the presence of God with his tears, he was saying to God, I still have truth. I still know you love us. And I'm in this temple because I have an understanding of what I'm supposed to do. And he got results. Touch three people and say, what are you missing? What are you missing? What are you missing? What are you missing? You're watching my Facebook. What are you missing? What are you missing? What are you missing? Do you know the truth? Do you know the truth of what he wants you to have? You get to the point where you just kind of, I don't know, I'm at a different place in my life now. in my life. It's like you just you just throw your life up to God and you say to the Lord whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, you can do it. Because now Dr. Johnson, I understand faith. Faith is the truth Lisa, faith is I know that he loves me. And faith is I move in understanding. And my true faith, I'm going to bless y'all. I'm going to bless y'all. We say, Lord, grant us to us the faith that was once delivered to the saints. I'm not talking about our grandmama then. That was once delivered to the saints in the scripture. And what was that faith? The faith that was once delivered to the saints is the faith that believes God when God don't do it. See, we are believing God for something. Wrong method. He didn't call you to believe him for something. He called you just to believe him. And we don't believe him anymore. We believing him for. And when we don't get the four, we don't believe him. I want somebody in this building to say, Lord, call me to believe you. When I was little, I was eating some watermelon the other day. And my mind went back to the dumbest thing. I was standing there, and as soon as I took the first bite, Dr. Soroya, I took the bite of the watermelon, Sister Vanessa, and I went, (laughs) like I I quickened and started spitting the seeds out real quick. And I had to catch myself. You know why I did that? Because I had an old uncle that told us when we was kids, you swallow them seeds, a watermelon gonna grow in you. And, And... 
and we be outside playing and I ran up on the pouch porch one day and I had been eating a lot and eating popsicles and all that and my stomach was sticking out and he said, you got a watermelon in you. And, I, and his name was Uncle Bully. I said, no, I, I ain't got no He said, yes, you do, because I saw you swallowing watermelon seed. And when you get up, it's going to be bigger. Your stomach going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Scared the devil out of me. Here I am now. Watch this. That was all the way back when I was five and six years old. I'm 60 years old spitting out watermelon seeds. You know why? Because somebody planted in my head, and that memory is still there, that if I swallow that seed, a watermelon going to grow in me. I'm not hearing y'all. Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to? Why? Why? Because I didn't know truth. And because I didn't know truth, I didn't believe in the nutrients of the watermelon. It was causing me to reject the most nutritional part of the watermelon, which is swallowing the seed. But I let somebody talk me out of that. Because they gave me what they believed. Knowing it was a lie. And they caused me to grow up believing their lie. So now I'm 60 years old. Talking about We don't believe in God no more. We're gamblers. You know how they said we're the temple of the Holy Ghost? In this room and watching by internet is walking casinos. Okay. I'm going to come on this side because y'all didn't like what I said. Over there. Walking casinos. Somebody said, come to prayer. If you come to prayer, God going to grant three miracles. Here you go. Not come to prayer just because I want to I wanna communicate with God. Not, not come to prayer because I want I want a greater relationship with you, Lord. It's always got to be a catch to it. Come on, somebody. So now we're growing up in the body of Christ with warped faith. That's not faith. Come on, somebody. Faith in God is whatever you want to do. And if you don't want to do nothing, I still love you. If you don't want to give me nothing, I still love you. If you don't want to give me a miracle, I still love you. If I die with what I got, I know that you know what's best for me. Hezekiah. Beg God. Turned his face to the wall. Now we hear everybody preach this part. And God had it more years. But when you read about what happened, he should have went on. This guy should have went on. He should have went on when he had a door of escape. He would have locked that about their relatives. Lord heal so and so. Lord heal so and so. The Lord don't heal them. The Lord didn't heal them. He did heal them. He did heal them. He healed them out of that sickness. But he knew what was best for them. If they had to stay five more years, they about would have lost, lost their life in God. He takes you while you're ready. He knows what's best. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm going to help somebody. I'm helping somebody right now. I'm helping somebody. Our job is to put the ask on the table. Our job is not to predetermine the answer. I'm not hearing y'all. Who is God talking to? Who is God talking to? My God, I feel the presence of the Lord in here. But why did they have to die? Because God said so. So why my daddy had to leave? Because it was time. I'm not hearing y'all. Who is who? Is who? Who is God talking to? Why my uncle had to die? Because it was time. Lord, what, what, what's going on in me? Why, why you let this sickness? Because I'm birthing something in you. You got people in this room, and I'm looking at Rhonda and others that have gone to levels in God that they would not have ever gone through. And they would not have reached that height 
had God not allowed their body to be afflicted in a certain way. It pressed them to a place in God that Rhonda got faith in God. She ain't even supposed to be walking. She's not, she's not even supposed to have the activities of her limb. The doctor said she would never walk again. So every day that she get up, even days when she go to stand up and it looked like her legs ain't gonna work, she got to get up in her faith and start walking around and praying and speaking. Come on somebody, come on somebody, come on somebody. Sometimes we wonder why people are sick or wonder why people are going through things because God wants another level out of us. I'm not hearing y'all. God trying to press us to another level. And listen, listen. He been calling you to come to that level and you won't come. So now he got to press you to that level. He got to give you a reason to have to come. He has to give you a reason to have to stay in his face just to survive. If I don't stay in his face, I will lose my mind. So God, why is this in my body? Because I love you. Why does it feel like I'm left here by myself? Because I love you. Why? You see, my you done gave me this. Watch this, because not only do I love you, I trust you. And I only give people, let me see your phone, let me just go hand it back to you. When I walk up to you, and I watch your life, and I watch how you've been faithful, and I watch how you've been consistent, and I watch how you never, you never broke down and just said, I ain't going, I don't want the Lord no more. And the Lord chooses people in situations in the world. And he finds faithful people. And he said, Pastor Brewer, will you, will you hold on to faith with that for me? Can, can, can you just hold on to that church for me? Because I believe you can. I believe you ain't going to let it drop. So just, can, can you? That's a faith assignment. See, we keep thinking it's ours. It's a faith. It's a, people that God put in my life, and he said, can you, can you, can you just hold on to Sarita for me? Yeah. Yes, Lord. Can, 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 can you just hold on to her and don't let her go? Because I trust you. Yeah. I trust you ain't going to let her go. Yes, Lord. Okay. It's a, it's a faith assignment. And we think everything is personal. Can you, can you hold on to this? women's shelter idea for me because I because I don't seen you trust me when you ain't got nothing I, just just so while you hold this up hold the door open for some women that's that's getting ready to come out of jail and, and, and just just hold it I know I know you ain't got enough money for it I know you ain't got enough connections for it. I know it looked like it almost get ready to work out and then it don't work out can you just hold on to that for me because I ain't asking you to do nothing about it. I'm just asking you to hold on to the faith of it so that it doesn't escape in the atmosphere. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm just asking you to hold its position in the atmosphere until I land that thing. See, 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 is anybody getting that? Is anybody getting that? Because if you believe in God for something, it ain't your belief. He done said, can you hold on this for me? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Can you, can you, can you hold on to modeling for me? Because there's some girls that you're going to meet that you're going to have to bring them into the plan of salvation. Can you just, can you just persevere? Can you just not give up? Uh-huh. The doors ain't where you want them to be. You ain't doing what you want to do. But you know what? I gave you the talent. I gave you the look. Just hold on to it. Just hold on to it. Because I'm going to use you after a while. I'm going to use everything you've been through. I'm going to use everything that you were tormented by. I'm going to use all your pain and your hurt. I'm going to use every bit of it. This is not personal. I built you this way for a reason. I designed your body this way for a reason. I gave you the natural talent to model for a reason. Because I'm asking you to hold on to some girls that's coming your way. Hold on, Abbasan. Can you just hold on? Can you just hold on? Can I just give you this to hold on to it for me? And when you feel yourself getting weary, it's because you're taking it personal. You think it's about you. When you feel like you, you're starting to feel hurt about it, 
pride done got in it. Because now you're concerned about how you're going to look if it don't work out. When this ain't personal, this is business. I told you to hold on to it. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I just told you to hold it. I just told you to hold it. I'm watching stuff now come to pass. Lisa could tell you. I'm watching unbelievable doors that you're getting ready to hear about really soon. 15 years I've been praying. 15 years I've been praying for this one door. 15 years. And it looked like it was getting worse, not better. It looked like it wasn't going to never open. It looked like the people weren't thinking about opening it. And I went through living hell. I went to the bottom. I went to the darkest hole. But I wouldn't let it go. I wouldn't let it go. Because he gave me to hold on to it. He gave me to hold on to it. It's like a person that's running with a football. And they get tackled. And they getting tackled and jumped on. But they squeeze that ball closer to them. Because the game of the game is don't lose the ball. I don't care if you have to hit the ground. Don't lose the ball. Lord Jesus, is that a preach right there? I don't care. I don't care if you got to fumble. Don't lose the ball. I don't care if they throw you down. I don't care if 10 men jump on top of you and roll you over. When they blow the whistle and everybody get off you, you better still be holding that ball. Because if you're still holding the ball, you're much closer than you were before. Who am I talking to right now? I just held on to it. In the midst of everything, I held on to it. And how do you know when you're ready? How do you know when you're ready for your faith vision to come to pass? How do you know? And now this getting ready, this getting ready to help some of y'all. This is how you know right here. And if you're in this building, you're watching by internet. This is how you know that the door that you have been praying for is getting with it open. Matter of fact, it's already open. It's going to manifest. Now, this ain't going to make no sense to you. This right here ain't going to make no sense to you, but you got to trust me when I say this one because I know what I'm talking about. Trust me. When it's time you're going to be caught in the middle of two worlds. When it's time, you're going to be caught in the middle of the breakthrough coming and some of the greatest warfare you have ever experienced. And the blessing is going to drop at the same time the warfare is going on. See, I can't get nobody to talk to me right there. Because y'all like, like I don't know what I'm talking about, and I promise you I do. There's going to be losses while you're gaining. Okay, okay, Lord Jesus, I just said something like that. There's going to be losses while you're gaining. You're going to be gaining, but there's going to be some losses. Come on, somebody. And now you got to choose which way you're going to go. I said you got to choose which way you're going to go. Because the enemy is going to want you to go in the morning when it's time to go into rejoicing. I'm, I'm not hearing y'all. And why? And why? Because guess what? Whatever it is you lose in God is saying, let that go because I got something greater for you. Come on, somebody. God is saying, let that go. Because I'm, listen, listen, I'm finished with you in that. I'm finished with you with them. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right now. Hey, Basha, you can't hold on to what I'm snatching. Who is God talking to up in here? He talking to me. He talking to you. He talking to everybody in here. You can't hold on to what God is snatching. This is how you do it. Stand up, step up. Give me your Bible. Put your Bible in your hand. Put the cell phone in your hand. I want your cell phone instead of your Bible. This is how God do it. When it's time for the, when it's time for the breakthrough, this is how he do it. Standing in front of you. And you ready. And God said, I got your miracle. And you praying about this. And this is how the Lord do it. So it won't hurt so bad. He go.
And while you looking over there saying, I just, I, 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 I just, I, I just lost that, but, but good God have mercy. What, did, what is this God done getting? I, I, wait, 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 I, I just, wait, 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 oh God, God, I just lost that, but good Lord Jesus, what is going on right here? Oh, y'all, come on, it's called bait and switch. Can I have that? Because if I can have that, you can have this. How many people did God minister to tonight? How many people did God minister to tonight? See, you're going to be able to say, I call and you answer. And you came, you came to my rescue, and now I want to be where you are. So I call, and you answer. And you came, you came to my rescue, and now I want to be where you are. Somebody say, I want to be where you are. I want to be where you are. Somebody lift your hands up. I want to be where you are, I want to be, yeah, I want to be where you are. Somebody say, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be, I want to be where you are. Thank you, Jesus. And you answer, and you came, you came to my rescue, and now I want to be where you are. I don't know about y'all, but I trust them when I can't trace them. over this building. Feel the presence of the Lord in here. I'm telling y'all. When he returns us back to being faith people, we do things and they're not out of our emotions. Stay right there, Josh. Not out of our emotions. Because now I have a greater confidence in what God is doing. Come on, stand my hip. I have a greater confidence in what God is doing because I'm out of my emotions about it. I walk with a different confidence because I'm out of my emotions about all of it. You know what I'm saying? It's like whatever, whatever God does, he loves me. See, if you, if, if, if you can concentrate on the fact that for God so loved the world that he gave, whatever God does is because he loves you. Whatever God does. God so loved the world that he gave. So the actions of God can only be out of love. Only. That's the revelation right there. The actions of God can only be love. He can only do something out of love because it's not what he does, it's who he is. That, now, now that right there will, that right there will preach all over the nation. You can only be who you are. Jesus can only keep his word because that's who he is. 
God can only do stuff because he loves us. And when he says, I know the thoughts that I think of you and they are good and not evil. And I want to give you your expected end. Sometimes I got to take you down a dark road to get you to your expected end. Sometimes there's some stuff in the highway and your GPS will say detouring you. And you be going down streets you ain't never been before. Dark. Some streets ain't got no lights on them. Right, going through right. raggedy neighborhoods. And you be like, good Lord, where am I at? Jesus. And, and watch this. And you going, I, I ain't never been to. And all of a sudden you start seeing drug addicts and crackheads and, and trash all over the floor. But, but guess what? Guess why you keep on driving? Because the GPS keeps saying, keep going this way. Keep going this way. Keep going this way. I didn't take. I didn't tell you to stop and get out the car and talk to the crackheads. I didn't tell you to stop and get robbed. You're going to go through some rough neighborhoods in your life, but I'm going to get you to your destiny. Somebody better say something up in here. I wish I had a church up in here that knew how to praise God. You're going to have to go down some rough streets, some rough neighborhoods, some dark alleys, but I'm going to get you to your destiny. You just follow the GPS of the Holy Ghost. Who am I talking to? I stopped asking him why. I stopped asking him why. Because I trust him. I trust his love for me. Did this minister to anybody tonight for real? Well, I went for that job, and I was believing God for that job, and I knew I was the most qualified, and they didn't give it to me. I said, well, how you feel? Well, he loved me. Well, what, 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 how do you know he loved you when they gave it to the girl that ain't even qualified more than you? Somebody used to work in some of those companies where they walked in there and shot up everybody. Wow. And they lost their job. And they probably said, why? Because the Lord knew three years from now a gunman was coming. Stop questioning the Lord. Stop asking the Lord why. Stop saying why. But Lord, I, I, I can't believe you let me lose my car. And then all of a sudden you see on the news where cars blowing up. He loves us. He loves us all over this building. I gotta go. I gotta go. Jesus. 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 Faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. Faith in God. All over this building. Oh, give me those envelopes. I gotta go. We move in faith. We move in three things. Truth, love, and understanding. 30 people in this building that were so $100 seat offered out of truth, out of love, out of understanding. Come now. Come now. 30 people in this building, God said, we'll do it. It's not emotional anymore. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach us faith. What is that? I'm trying to teach us faith. That's all. Real faith. Not, ooh, Sister Watermelon preaching, I really felt it. No. While you taking this envelope, say truth, love, and understanding. Truth, that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm moving in faith. Out of truth, love, and understanding. Come on, he said 30 people. You're watching by internet. Truth, love, and understanding. Hit that contact us button. Hit that contact us button right up there. You got to do this. You got to do this. Because understanding is movement. You move in what you hear God say when you understand it. That's real faith. That's real faith. Hit that contact us button because I'm telling you. The Bible said it is impossible to please God without faith. It is impossible to please him if you don't have faith. All over this building, you said, Dr. Bonham, I don't have $100. I'll give the biggest seat I can. I'll give 50. I'll give 30. Come and get this envelope out of my hand. You're watching by internet. You're watching by Facebook. The Lord is talking to you. When you hear the word of the Lord like that, the Bible said, agree with God. Agree with God. The Bible said, wherever so ever a man's treasure is, there also lies his heart. 
Hit that contact us button and sow it because God is telling you to sow it. Because he's telling you to sow it. My God. My God. Some of you that are watching by internet, if you want to text to give, you text it to JB Give. JB Give to 71441. I thought it was 7441. It's 7. 71441. 71441. JB Give to 71441. All over the building, come, 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 come. Come, come, all over the building. You got to agree with this, come on, come on, you got to agree with this. You got to agree with this. And you agree with it by putting the seed on it. That's how you agree with it. Hit that contact us button. Or text JB Give 71441. Or text JB Give 74 71441. All over this building. Oh my God. Oh my God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for your faith. I thank you for faith in you, God. I thank you for faith in you, God. Somebody wave your hand and give him praise. We're getting ready to leave the air. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody worship him. Keep your eyes on him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. I'm telling you, this was a word tonight. This was a word tonight. This was a word tonight. You got to go back to believing in God. You got to go back to believing in God. Take an envelope. You got to go back to believing in God. You got to go back to being a believer in God. I got faith because faith is truth. Faith is love and faith is understanding. I got the right combination to get a yes from God. And when I get a no, my no converts me into trust. And my trust sends me back to faith. Somebody give God a praise right there. My God. Hit that contact us button. And I'll see you tomorrow night. Oh, come on, somebody. Give God a praise right there. Give him a praise right there. Lord Jesus, when you get your offering ready, just come and put it on the altar. Put it on the altar.